Welcome to section four, customizing. In this section, we're going to take a look at preferences, how to customize Wireshark and improve your workflow by tweaking some options within Wireshark. Profiles, which are sets of preferences and colorizing rules and things like that, which make your analysis and different protocols and different scenarios easier. And colorizing traffic, which allows you to adjust the coloring rules that are already there by default that you might have noticed to better bring to light different issues that occur in your packet captures. So let's get into preferences. In this video we're going to take a look at how to customize Wireshark to your needs and preferences in different scenarios and discuss recommendations about those types of scenarios as to why you might want to enable or disable different preferences that we'll go through. To access Wireshark's preferences go to Edit Preferences and that will open up the preferences window and on the left you'll see that there's a number of categories that you can choose from and that breaks up the preferences so we don't have a thousand preferences all on one page and the first category is appearance and in appearance you can change a number of settings including the default folder that you most commonly open files from and changing the filter entries and recent files values and what those do are the, probably the most common things you'd want to change in this section and the filter entries changes the number of filters that appear in this drop down box We're at the display filter section. So right now there's 10 and if we close this you'll see you click on this drop down with the arrow. This is the last 10 that I've entered. You can change that so it shows more and that's what that preference does. Additionally we have recent files and that's based off of the file menu. If you change that to a higher value, then your open recent will show an additional number of recent files. Down near the bottom of this section, you'll see main toolbar style, and it says icons only right now. And if you're new to Wireshark and you're watching through this video series to learn all the ins and outs of Wireshark, you might have noticed that toolbar up at the top there with all the icons, they, they don't tell you what they are unless you mouse over them. You can change that so it says icon or text or icons and text. That can be pretty helpful for someone who's new to Wireshark. It'll tell you what all those buttons do uh, without having to spend time to mouse over each one. So if we click OK, you'll see that it's much more verbose with its description as to what these buttons do. Another helpful section in here is the layout underneath appearance. And this layout section, you can change how that default view looks like within Wireshark. You might have noticed that as I've done captures previously in this course so far, that it breaks it up in Wireshark with, with, in three panes. And the three panes are on top of each other, the top one being the list of packets, the middle one being the details of a selected packet, and the bottom one being the bytes. And so if you don't like that and you want to change how it looks, either in overall organization or remove one of those panes, you can do that in here. And you can see a number of options across the top as to how you might want things broken up and then you can also change which ones are in which panes and whether or not you even want any to show up such as some people don't really care about the packet bytes we only care about the list and the details so you can certainly go and turn off the packet bytes if that doesn't you know if that's not something that you need now in the advanced filtering video we went through how to create columns in Wireshark and this is another way of doing so in editing those columns so while you can right click on a field within the packet details as I showed you before to create a column out of it, you can also create your own custom ones in here or reorder or remove the different ones that are already there. You can of course customize the fonts and colors within Wireshark, but these are separate from the colorizing rules that we will get into later on in this section. Under the capture category, you can choose a default interface. Now you've noticed before that I have a number of interfaces on my system. You can select your favorite interface or your most commonly used interface on your capturing system if you do so very often. So I might want to choose my gigabit adapter for my examples here since I use that interface most commonly to create the examples that I show in this course. You can also in here turn on and off the PCAP NG format which I would highly recommend that you leave it enabled since that is now the new standard format but if you have a requirement to 
capture only in the old PCAP format for some reason, for some legacy software or something like that, you can certainly do so. To improve performance in Wireshark, you may want to turn off these two options, updating the list of packets in real time and automatically scrolling in the live capture. You've noticed that in the captures that I've done so far. The second you click capture, it starts scrolling through in that packet list showing you everything that's coming in at that moment. Now that is useful for small captures and quick ones, but if you have a system that's receiving a lot of data, maybe it's a span port on a heavily used trunk or something like that, and, or the system is old and it potentially could drop packets because it doesn't have the processing power to, to do that, you may want to turn this off to preserve your performance in Wireshark. Your next section in the preferences is the filter expressions and we've gone over that in a previous video. This is where all of those expression buttons will show up. Our next category is name resolution and Wireshark allows you to resolve many of the, the different addresses that we see in Wireshark into different names to make it easier for us as humans to understand what we're looking at. So by default it allows for resolution of MAC addresses to the first half of the MAC address. If you know about MAC addresses and how they work, the first half of the MAC is the manufacturer of the network card. So Wireshark has a built-in list of those known manufacturers and those OUIs, which is the first half of the MAC and it will try to resolve them for you and that's why you'll see potentially Realtek colon and then the other half of a MAC address or something like that or Cisco colon and the, the last half of a MAC address that's because of this checkbox. You can also resolve the transport names which are the TCP and UDP ports and IP addresses. Now if you choose the IP address option note that it does not reference a static file within Wireshark like the MAC address and the transport names. It will attempt to do DNS resolution while you're capturing. So that can be a very negative thing with Wireshark, especially if you are doing a large capture with a lot of data coming in. You could have potentially thousands and thousands of DNS uh, resolution requests going out from your capture system clogging up the works. So what I would recommend is instead what you can do in the packet details and when you have a capture you can right click on an IP address and resolve it with that specific IP address rather than resolving everything. Now the lower section here where it says enable OID resolution, suppressing SMI errors and things like that, these are for SNMP resolution. So in SNMP you have MIBs which are basically word translations to OID locations and you can resolve those in Wireshark if you are capturing SNMP traffic you can resolve those OID strings into the MIBs if you enable OID resolution. Our next category is protocols and when you expand the protocols category here you have a huge list of all the protocols supported by Wireshark and all of their associated configuration options that you can tweak. Now most of these you can leave alone at their defaults and everything will work just fine. There's two that you're probably going to want to tweak uh, at some point in your career and that'll be IP and TCP. Well, well three if you count IPv6 now. So IPv4, IPv6, and TCP are probably the most common ones that you're going to adjust if you adjust them at all. So what we'll do is we'll go to IPv4 and you'll see there's a checkbox here that's actually disabled by default. Now this used to be enabled by default, so depending on the version of Wireshark you're running, if you are not using the latest version of 2.0, the validate the IP4 checksum would potentially be enabled. And when it would do that, it would sometimes show up based on your system with a whole lot of bad checksum errors. And the reason for that is that a lot of newer systems, especially servers, have been starting to do checksum offloading where the software does not do the checksum creation but the hardware does right before it gets sent onto the wire. And so Wireshark didn't see that and so it always thought that the checksum didn't match because it couldn't see the hardware creating the checksum as it got put onto the wire. So that's one thing to go in to check is you most likely will want to have that off nowadays due to most network cards doing checksum offloading. 
And our next category is statistics, and there's not much in here that you're going to want to change. I would leave most of this alone, unless possibly you'd want to change the number of channels in the RTP player. Our last category is advanced, and in the advanced category we have a listing of all of the preferences and settings within Wireshark in a nice big list for you. So if there was something that you needed to change but you or maybe you had a problem or something like that and you found an answer online to change a value and you don't know where that is within the interface you could do so by going in here and what's nice is there's a search function if we needed to change something you can filter it and determine where a certain setting is our next video is profiles where we're going to take preferences and colorizing rules and things like that and create custom packages of them as profiles for different needs for different situations.